You're watching DIY Volts. I'm Seth. I was given a tour of a micro hydro system in the mountains of Western North Carolina. A fellow named Bill installed this system attached to an old dam. It is quite a fascinating system, bringing in over 500 watts consistently. He is using equipment from Langston's Alternative Power. I'll have a link to that equipment in the description down below, as well as my affiliate links to Signature Solar that also has electrical equipment for you to check out. Behind me is a pond that is several feet deep, and there is a dam on this side, which drops approximately eight feet from this point here down to the rock. And then there is an additional drop from that rock down to the bottom for a total of 15 feet. So you can see there is a couple of hundred gallons coming across this all the time. And here is the intake to his unit. He's got a screen cage that prevents debris from entering into the pipe. And then he's got a six inch pipe elbowed down into the water here. See if I can move you across here without dropping the camera. Pipe goes over about six feet and then 90s around this little concrete pillar. And that, you can see here, goes over to the turbine. And this is all six inch pipe up to the turbine uh, that Spencer has provided here. Three phase, we'll get to that here in just a bit. But you can see there is about an eight foot pipe dropping down, another 90, which heads over here. And there's gonna be a demonstration of how this unit is turned on here in just a moment. And uh, from the edge of the white pipe, it then upgrades to an eight inch pipe, creating uh, a vacuum with a Venturi effect. So we'll be distributing uh, demonstrating all of that here in just a bit. Because the other end of this pipe here is sticking down into the water, the siphon has to be created to get the water from the top of the dam into this pipe here. To do that without some kind of suction device would be quite difficult. You would have to have a port here with a shutoff valve and pour water into the pipe to produce that siphon. But with this design, Bill has got a shop vac that will create a negative pressure and will pull water over the dam for him without much work at all. So he's going to demonstrate that right here. So simple shop vac creating negative pressure in here and the negative pressure is being displaced by the water coming right in which will happen very quickly. So. As soon as I turn this on, that turbine will begin to turn within five seconds or less. So get ready to watch that, and here we go. There we go, starting to spin. Now I'll just shut this off. The air bubbles will get cleaned out of there in quite short time. As soon as those air bubbles are out of there, I'll open up this vent to give you a sense of the amount of vacuum suction that this lower level of extra water volume is created. And now's probably a good enough time, as you can see, that turbine is being wrecked. So, this is an example of the amount of vacuum that this is now created. It's a lot. That is a lot. And that is a sucking gorilla. It's pulling so much more water out of this than just the siphon alone. This is a three phase AC unit. So you can see he has the three wires of the AC coming into this joiner box here. And he has 10 two wire that's uh, ground contact. He's using the ground of this wire to take the three phase to the house. So this thing creates so much suction that as you can see now 
after this thing's been running, we started it up about 10 minutes ago. The flow rate over the top of the dam is significantly reduced. And the suction here is just powerful. You can see below the creek how much water is still running through the creek and who's not coming over the dam. And it's all going through this system. So the gallons per minute rate, I don't know, but it was all of what you saw before. This thing also creates so much suction that it'll create a vortex. And when that vortex strengthens to the point where it then becomes an air suction, this whole system then loses efficiency. So I came up with the Vortex Destroyer. Simply a tennis ball in there that when a vortex begins, that will seek it out. It sort of gets sucked over to it. will spin with it and prevent air from being sucked down and it'll destroy that vortex and then it'll just search for the next vortex until it finds it and destroys it. So it's a handy little device to have in my containment area. This is really clean right now. So the vortex. So currently with the flow rate of the creek he's using most of the water out of the turbine and there is just enough overflow currently coming over the dam. Um, he has seen it where the turbine is pulling all of the water and it's draining the lake so definitely has to watch for that. The wire run from the turbine to his house is 100 feet. Um, so with AC he's losing very little power from the turbine to the house. Let's step inside here and show you what he is doing to get this power to the grid. From the turbine, he comes up to a rectifier, which then comes to this grid tie limiter inverter, which will allow him to have power in, and then it will uh, read the power that's going to the house by this limiter switch, and then he has the power going to the wall socket here. So it should kick on here in just a moment. So house is using 135 watts, and now he's pulling from the turbine. That turbine is generating, it's coming out under full load. It's generating 200, uh, I should say 24 volts of power with full load on it. It's making 520, 28 watts of power. And this phase is now, right now, taking from the grid some wattage because I turned a few things on. So this is the power from the grid into the grid. This inverter coming in here with the DC at 24 volts. This guy is converting it to 530 watts of power that is then fed directly into one phase of my panel. This is the sensor wire that tells this whether it's calling for power. And if it is, this essentially is what's preventing the backwash out. So in the event of the power is down, this thing will not be pumping out into the grid, which will protect the workers out there. But also my meter is not geared for reversal. So essentially it would be charging me for power going backwards because it doesn't know the difference of direction. In order to do those situations where you're getting paid for power, you have to have a different meter socket that analyzes the directional flow, which I don't have. So we're humming along under optimal conditions. Filters clean. And I'm using it, what it can create. Here's a look of the waterfall after the turbine is running for about uh, 30 minutes. You can see that it's consuming most of the water from the creek here. It'd be nice to have an overflow all the time, but here in the middle of summer, when the water may be flowing a little bit less, there is a gap where uh, it's consuming all the water in the creek. A big shout out to Bill for sharing his micro hydro installation. A few things that I would change on Bill's setup is to remove that grid tie limiter inverter that he's using that just supplements his house consumption. And I would put in something like the EG418K. That system would allow him to power the entire house off of that 500 watts and never have to have a power bill, except maybe if he's running things like 
uh, an HVAC system or a bunch of uh, mini splits or something like that. Um, I would also install something around a uh, 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage with a lithium iron phosphate system and he would be set, good to go all the time. Especially with 500 watts coming in overnight, he would not have to worry about charging those batteries um, with any kind of solar or grid power. But his system is doing exactly what he wanted. It was mostly a hobby for him. And so I say it is a hobby well accomplished. Well, thank you so much for watching the DIY Volts channel. I'm Seth, and I will see you in the next video.